and welcome to our kitchen studio here at HSN. I'm Chef Shira Masood, and we've got a fun hour where we're gonna do things a little bit differently this hour with Kitchen HQ. This whole hour is about you, me, and recipes. We're going over recipes that maybe you never made at home, maybe you never thought you could make, but you totally can, and I'm gonna walk you through the steps it's totally gonna be fun. So for example, we're making egg bites, the kind that you usually would buy. We're making them at home, perfect shape. My favorite flavor combo, Gruyere, bacon, scallion. You're gonna love it. We're also doing waffles, but not just any old waffles. Stuffed waffles, apple pie stuffed waffles. Light, fluffy, making waffles is so, so easy. So wait for that. And last but not least, soft serve ice cream out of the machine, just like at the ice cream store. If you never made ice cream before, if you never made waffles before, or egg bites, stick with me the whole hour, sit back, relax. Now, that said, you didn't think they wheeled me out here alone, did you? They didn't. Bobby. The food taster. The food taster. <laughs> you have got it made yes. today. You just get to sit back, relax, exactly, eat, and learn. And learn. And We're gonna learn. learn. We're gonna have fun. And I exactly. hope that we can kind of really engage with our audience. So Absolutely. let us know. I know a lot of you are watching yeah, on, we're live Facebook on Facebook Live. Absolutely. Mom, you are watching. My mom's always on Facebook Live. Is she? Let us know what you're thinking. Hi, engage mom. with us in the comments and let us know what you think. I you love ready? it. I'm ready. Let's start cooking. Let's, Let's go. Let's start cooking. Let's do mm, this thing. Mm, mm. So, like I said, Egg Bite 101, we're going to start things off because I think a lot of us are in a breakfast rut. You know, scrambled eggs, cereal, oatmeal on a loop. Let's do something a little bit different. And I always used to buy these at the coffee shop. They're expensive, got to wait in line at the drive-through, packed with preservatives. We're gonna make egg bites at home, super easy. So, in my Kitchen HQ tilting bowl, which I'll talk to you about in a second, I get my eggs. And here's the trick to cracking eggs, by the way. There's a trick to everything. The skinny part of the egg should be pointing upwards, okay? And that way, the egg doesn't break any shell, or disintegrate. So little tricks like that, I've cracked probably a trillion eggs in my life. I'm always sticking the skinny part of the egg upwards, okay? And notice that I always crack my egg on the surface and never on the side of the bowl. You'll never see a chef on TV crack the egg on the side of the bowl because that's how you get the shell in your egg. So now we're going in, a little bit of scrambled egg here, and that's where the tilting action is so cool. You know. When I went to culinary school in New York City, the French Culinary Institute, the dean of our school was Jacques Pepin, one of my heroes, someone I grew up watching. And if ever you watch Jacques Pepin making eggs on TV, he's always incorporating air into the egg. And that is the secret to a light egg bite or a light omelet or a light scrambled egg. So this is just a small difference, really adds up to quite a lot. So tilt that mixing bowl and incorporate air if ever you've had a scrambled egg or an omelet in a restaurant and you're like, wow, this is so much better than I make at home, it's those little differences of getting air in there. So I've got my scrambled eggs, I've got about three, and then I've got bacon. Left over from last night or left over from a couple days, no problem. This is a great fridge dump recipe as well. Let's say you have leftover sausage or ham. If you've got leftover peppers, I sometimes take some leftover grilled veg from my dinner the night before. I'll put them into my egg bites, super versatile. Now, green onions, one of my favorites. You could go with chives, you could go with shallots, but I like that punch of the onion in my egg bite. And listen, everyone likes it the way they like it. My kids might kind of want me to omit the green onion, you can do that, but I'm still working in that air. And this is a technique that I want you to practice at home. Omelets, egg bites, scrambled eggs, Air in your whites and yolks, really, you can see those air bubbles. Really gonna get a light, fluffy, almost a souffle-like texture on that egg bite, which is so much better than the sorbet ones anyway. And then last but not least, cheese. So, how often do we rely on plain old cheddar cheese? I know my kids love it, but if you wanna break out of a breakfast rut, try some Gruyere, one of my favorite cheeses ever made. And Gruyere, you know, you see it a lot in French cooking, even though it's a Swiss cheese. It's actually from Switzerland, but we use it a lot in classic French cooking, like French onion soup, a croque madame, a croque monsieur, because it has this beautiful, nutty, sweet element to it. So just by switching out the cheese, you can kind of get out of your boring old routine. If you are kind of just making omelets or egg bites, always with cheddar, Try a Gruyere, try a, a Comte, an Emmental, and never buy pre-grated cheese. I've got my Kitchen HQ grater right here. By the way, look at that. It also acts as my kind of lemon or lime rind, so we kind of always try and think of, of everything. And grate in that cheese, 
Never buy pre-grated cheese. It's more expensive and packed with preservatives. Better to buy it fresh, grate it yourself. I'm gonna show you later on in the show how to vacuum seal it to keep it fresh. So, I've got my cheese, I've got my bacon, I've got my scallion. Think about this in terms of just dumping some last night's leftovers, cooked sausage, cooked veg. Let me know on Facebook Live. What are you putting in your egg bites? What do you have kicking around in your fridge that you can say, oh, wait a second, I can actually do this. I could do it myself. I could do it at home. My wife loves egg whites with sun-dried tomatoes, feta. So get creative. Little Italian seasoning would be great as well. Now we've got from KitchenHQ the actual egg bite maker. And check out how easy this is. First things first, I got to plug it in. Easy enough. And you'll see that the light turns on orange. There's no on off button, there's no settings, there's no high heat, low heat. All you do is turn it on and let it get started. And while it gets started, you pour a little bit of water in there. And what the water does, this is so smart, it will kind of steam everything as it cooks. So those eggs, as they cook, rely on steam to kind of become, like I said, almost like a souffle, beautiful, light, fluffy texture, better than the store-bought ones by far. So we're gonna rely on steam, and I don't know if you guys saw that also. We've got the perfect little molds to get that shape, that kind of perfect drive-through shape that you don't have to go out and buy ever again. Now, I keep talking about my tilting bowl, but look at this. It has that little spout, so I can pour in my mixture perfectly into my egg bite mold. So how cool is this? Now, this is just one flavor that I'm making, my personal favorite flavor, but on hsn.com, I made a ton of different recipes with flavor combinations to give you inspiration, to get you started. Like I said, my wife loves the egg white version with sun-dried tomato, feta, spinach, but I have a couple different versions online with pictures, with recipes. Definitely check that out on hsn.com. Now, this is coming up to a temperature. I just close it. There's a safety lock here, and we leave it. It's gonna take anywhere between four, five, maybe six minutes. I'm gonna show you it's not a crime to peek. You can take a peek and let it do its thing. You could do this the night before. If you know like me, my kids are always kind of rushing to get out the door in time. Do them the night before. Reheat them in the microwave real quick. They're just as good. Or you could do them morning of. While you do that, we're gonna make coffee. We're gonna do the whole breakfast routine. So absolutely get creative. And I do hope everyone on Facebook Live is telling me Give me new ideas. What are you putting in your egg bites? What do you have kicking around in your fridge? What do you think would taste good? I'll be the official judge. What cheese would you like to try? Let's get out of just kind of cheddar all the time. And speaking of cheeses, while that's cooking, I'm also gonna show you how it could be used as a panini press. So we've done grilled cheeses in here. We've done miniature pizza pies, we've done fruit pies, all sorts of things. So at Kitchen HQ, we want all of our items to kind of earn the space on your counter. If I'm asking you to kind of put this on your counter, it's gotta do double duty. I mean, that's valuable real estate, right? So think about this just as your quick kind of ad hoc panini press for a quick sandwich, a grilled cheese, just to do, you know, I've even done French toast in here. And like I said, on hsn.com, those recipes are up. If you wanna do one quick slice of French toast, you could do it in here super easily. Just take out those inserts for the eggs, and now it's a panini press. So let's just do a little light panini. I've got some sourdough bread, my favorite kind of bread, and I know during the pandemic, everyone started making sourdough. You can go back to buying it, no big deal. Now, little store-bought pesto, which I totally love. I also love sun-dried tomato pesto. If you find some of that, that's great. Get it on the inside of your bread. Sure, you could do a plain grilled cheese, but we could kind of amp it up a little bit, and it is summer, so what's the ultimate summer ingredient? Heirloom tomatoes. This is when tomatoes are in season. This is what makes a tomato special. So by heirloom tomato, I mean these tomatoes are grown in the same way that they've been grown for the last 100 years, right? No pesticides, antibiotics. That's why they're a little more pricey, but they're so worth it in the middle of summer when it's tomato season. Look for those colorful heirloom tomatoes, yellow, red, the funky green, and the different shapes. Slice your heirloom tomato nice and thin. By the way, these are great just in a salad. This is the time to enjoy heirloom tomatoes. Little olive oil balsamic, and off you go. So I'm gonna put some heirloom tomatoes on one side, and a little fresh mozzarella. That's that ball of mozzarella in the fresh section. We're not going with the preservative packed kind of fake stuff. I want it to taste good, so I'm gonna go, it's almost like a caprese salad, but in panini form, right? Those elements of the pesto with the basil, the mozzarella, and the heirloom tomatoes. Load it up onto your sandwich. Here's a quick 
vegetarian friendly lunch. I'm not preheating an oven. I'm not doing much. I'm putting it in. Don't forget to plug it in. Plug it on in and close it. And that kind of lock compresses it into a kind of panini, which is super, super cool. So these are things that we can do every morning, again, with the egg bites. Don't buy them. Do them fresh. Scrambled eggs, kitchen scraps, whatever you got kicking around. Gruyere, different cheeses, and make it yourself. Do an egg white version. Use your leftovers. Use also your panini press version to make your grilled cheeses, to do that beautiful heirloom tomato panini, which I love. And I'm gonna let them do their thing, but let's pretend it's morning, okay? I don't wanna make oatmeal anymore. I don't wanna make scrambled eggs. I've got my homemade egg bites cooking. I need a coffee. I do need a coffee. So over here, I've got my one cup coffee maker from Kitchen HQ, which is so smart because in the past, I've made whole pots of coffee. I have one cup, I go, I come back hours later, and it's just sitting there, and I'm reheating it in a microwave, which kind of defeats the purpose of the magic of a fresh cup of coffee, and it comes with that 20-ounce Traveler mug. So I'm basically replicating what I was buying, expensive, from a coffee shop, and I could do it at home and take it to go. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna load up the coffee, just like in a traditional large-scale coffee maker. It's just kind of smaller, more compact. Perfect for a single cup. And this is great too because I like plain black coffee. My wife likes different flavors like hazelnut coffee, whatever. This way I can do my plain black. She can do her flavors and we're all happy. So here you load the coffee into the filter. We put a little bit of water in top, just like a big large scale coffee maker. Okay, close it up. You got an on off switch on the side. You see it turns on with the orange light. And then we press brew. And it's gonna start brewing into that mug, which is perfect for on the go. You've got the silicone handle, so you don't need the hand guard. Won't burn your hand. Fits into your cup holder in the car. And you give it a second, I hear it. Ah, ah. That's the magic sound of fresh coffee brewing, not being destroyed in your microwave, which I love, okay? Let the coffee brew and take it to go. While that's brewing, I can come over here and peek. No shame in peeking at your egg whites to see the egg bites to see if they're done. So they're still cooking. Ooh, the bacon, the scallion, and the nutty gruyere is cooking away. The steam is doing its job. We can also take a peek at our panini. Oh, Ooh. okay, that one was pretty quick. Look how fast this is. That was like two minutes. I don't know. You don't need to heat up a pan. I, by the way, I didn't put any butter or oil either. The heat from the panini press did the job. Oh yeah, and it's hot too. I've got that mozzarella. I've got the beautiful heirloom tomato. This is the way a sandwich should be in the summertime. Basil, pesto, fresh mozzarella, and fresh heirloom tomato in a panini. Yes, you could do a plain Jane grilled cheese, but you can also get creative. You could do French toast in here. You could do your panini sandwiches. You could do, I've done fruit pies, I've done mini pizza bites. So again, at Kitchen HQ, we want to earn that space on your counter. It's amazing for egg bites, for egg whites, the Gruyere version I'm making, but it's also great for that little compact sandwich that you want in two minutes without any extra fat, no butter, no oil on the bread. I just put a little bit of pesto, that heirloom tomato, the fresh mozzarella. I'm gonna put it on here. You could kind of zhuzh it up with some balsamic glaze at the end. You could, I will. It's Foodie Friday. Oh yeah. And there's a Facebook question and they're feeding it to me in my ear. Guys, what was that question? Oh, would it be good to take to work? Absolutely. So look at the small kind of compact footprint. You could put this in your office kitchen, you could put it by your desk, a quick lunch, fresh. Both of these are great for work. So you could bring your egg bite maker to work, absolutely, and that's now your fresh panini, right? or you could bring your one cup coffee maker to work. This is ideal, this is the right size. I love these for home and work, or a boat, or an RV. They're compact enough to take anywhere, but they're versatile enough to earn the real estate on your counter. My coffee's singing to me, look at that. Bobby, can you smell fresh coffee? Mm, yes. I didn't forget about you, Bobby. <laughs> but that cup's mine, I'll tell okay, you that right next. now. That's my cup, so for me, it's worth it just for the mug. The Traveler mug is awesome. And I've bought Traveler mugs in the past where same features, stainless steel, you've got the silicone handle. But the fact that I have this now maker to do my individual cups of coffee fresh, I'm not making that big pot and relying on it and then going back to it. 
You're doing your individual cup fresh, and this is the way to do it. Whether you're talking about your flavored coffees, your plain coffees, even tea. Sometimes, I mean, we kind of got a breakfast theme to start off our, our show. Sometimes, if I'm in a real rush, I'll just fill it with water without anything in the filter, and I'll put an instant oatmeal right underneath. My kids are out the door. So you could do it for your instant oatmeal. You could do it for your tea, for your coffee, for your different flavors. And this is the right portion of fresh one cup coffee, okay? Try it with different teas, which I'll show you in a second. But it's all about versatility. It's not just about coffee. I want you to think about other ways to use it. But there's my traveler mug. So now I've got the lid. The lid can open and close as well. Fits into my cup holder. Again, the silicone handle. I'm now not going to the drive-thru. I've got my coffee. I've got my egg bites cooking. I've got, you could do a quick breakfast sandwich in there as the panini press, and out you go. And if I save that six, seven, eight, nine dollars every single morning, that adds up. And right now, food costs are at an all-time high. This really matters. So do the cup of coffee at home before you go out the door. Do the egg bites at home before you go out the door. Do your breakfast sandwich, your panini, your heirloom tomato panini. Do them at home and take them with you. Do them for the kids and take them with you. Again, the egg bites you could do the night before. There's no shame in that. Let's take a peek here. Ooh, -wee. you see how it's bubbling away? Can you see this? Remember how I said they're almost like little souffles? Look how they've risen up. Now, I could take it out now. They are nice, they're beautifully golden. I, you see this golden brown part though? I almost want a little bit more. This is just my personal preference. My kids don't want to see any color on them, but I like them just a little more golden brown. That's just me. But we did now the tea, uh, the coffee for myself. I want to show you how to do a quick cup of tea while I wait for my egg bites to finish to my taste. So I'm going to put in a clean filter and check this out. A couple bags of tea, some water, same idea. Okay, and watch this. So instead of coffee, you can put your tea bags in there. My wife also loves this. She loves berry teas and beautiful fruity teas. Turn it on, press the brew button, and you're gonna see that fresh tea start to come out. So it's for your tea, it's for your coffees, it's for your different flavors of coffee. And if I didn't put the tea bags in there, it would just be hot water. Imagine that onto an instant oatmeal. Really, really, really quick. There's the berry tea being made in real time. Now I love fresh citrus in my tea. So fresh lemons are gonna infuse into that tea. You could also kind of zhuzh it up with some rosemary in the tea. Believe it or not, I'm gonna talk about it all day today, tarragon. Tarragon, the most underrated herb ever, could go into your tea. How about a little bit of fresh honey? Right into the tea, let it get hot. Beautiful. You're doing individual cups of tea, coffee, a quick oatmeal. This is now your breakfast superhero. You could do individual drink orders and out you go out the door. Do your breakfast paninis in the panini press slash egg bite maker. Oh, we've got a question on the sandwich. Okay, now I like my egg bite. So, great question on the Facebook Live. There is no timer on the sandwich maker or the egg bite maker. Actually, there's no button at all. All you do is plug it in and it lights up and off you go. So, we wanted to make it super, super, super easy. There's no up, down, high heat, low heat. You just plug and play. But you will notice, I don't be shy to kind of peek. You can take a peek at it. Nothing's gonna happen. So you could set your timer however you normally do. Sometimes on your microwave you got a timer or you kind of set it on your phone. But don't be afraid to take a peek. I always kind of take a look and just see how my food is doing. And by the way, that's a great question to ask just in general. In cooking, you know, you gotta taste, you gotta look, you gotta smell. Use your senses, right? Don't be afraid to kind of take a peek, see how it's doing, smell if it's ready, but we want to make it as streamlined as possible. Sometimes appliances can be overly kind of thought out and too many, too many buttons and settings. There's none of that here. I'm gonna get out my, oh my gosh, look at that wobbly, beautiful, light egg bite. And that's what I was talking about. When you incorporate air into eggs, that's how they become fluffy. That's how you get a fluffy omelet, egg bite, scrambled egg. Tilt that mixing bowl and get air into it. So here's another little hack I wanna show you. I love to serve these to my kids, okay, at home or on the go. And these plates are their new favorites because they're kind of divided into segments. They're perfect for kids, yes, because they're in segments, and if you're like my kids, they don't want anything touching, God forbid. 
But they're also great for grown-ups because think about like a backyard barbecue where you could put your cold beer or your cold drink in the cup holder and put your burger in there. So it's easy to hold with one hand, right? But think about this also. When I think about my kids, they oftentimes get drawn towards, you know, those store-bought pre-packed lunches where everything's in fun shapes but not really good. It's like preservative packed stuff. Do the shapes yourself. Get a cookie cutter, get a shot glass. They love the shape of the egg bites. Give them little toast rounds and shapes. Give them little watermelon rounds. This is also a great lunch to give to them and pack in their lunch box, right? You don't have to buy the store-bought. Look, just little shapes like that, kids love. The scraps go into an infused water. They go into a fruit salad, whatever you've got. Don't waste those scraps, and these turn into breadcrumbs. But little changes like that, you got the perfect size shape of egg bite, you got the perfect size of fruit, perfect toast. Kids love it, they love it for lunch, they love it for breakfast. Now I've got my tea here for Bobby. I've got my coffee here for me. Bobby, you wanna try an egg bite? I love it. You gotta one. try this egg bite. Love it. So it's super hot and fresh. And I don't know if you're a Gruyere fan. Oh, I am. I Ooh, love so Gruyere. <sighs> Thank you. So oh. breakfast at 2 p.m. is served, oh, Bobby? This wait a is minute. like my, my Instagram worthy. Day. You got to Instagram. We definitely have to take a photo of How this. How much one. better does this look yes. than the cold drive through Ooh, version, right? Yeah. They're light, they're fluffy. And that beautiful tea. Ooh. You got the tea with the rosemary, the lemon, the honey. Get creative with your tea. Dig in, Can dig I in. Try it? That's still oh, so good. I love Gruyere bacon mm. and scallion. Mm. Right? Oh. Right? That is so good. Creamy, so soft, good. light. And you're right, the Gruyere is very different. I usually yes. gravitate to like more of a Fontina. Yeah, A Beautiful. lot of times. Creamy. And I love that too. Yeah. Really good. And always bacon. Always bacon. <laughs> For me anyway. <laughs> all day. But I want to also yeah. emphasize something. Be considerate of what cheese or what filling you're using. Notice yeah. I didn't put any salt. Because the Gruyere right. is salty and nutty, the bacon is salty. Mm. I didn't even add extra mm. salt. So if you're watching your salt, get creative mm. with your ingredients, right? But exactly. I definitely want to hear from everyone out there on Facebook Live, what are they putting in their egg bites? What's kicking around in their fridge that they can envision yes. putting into their own version? Let us know. I want to know what you're thinking. What's your favorite combination of egg or in an omelet form that you can now make in an egg bite form on the go? I have to tell you, yeah. I love the egg tip. Yeah. Because I love egg sandwiches, and even the yeah. other day, I'm picking out the shells, yes. right, because I'm always cracking it, like, on the side of the pan, yep. like a lot of stuff. That's a great tip to sort of just kind of angle it, right? You just kind of had it angled you just the side. kind of remember that pointy part of the egg, point it up. It's okay. almost like you're asking the egg to pray to yes. the, the heavens. <laughs> and it cracks perfectly. Don't crack it on your bowl. Crack it on your surface, yeah. and you'll never get a shell again. And air. Air. air, that's is a good your tip. Friend. Those mixing bowls, They're though. They're awesome. I see. That's the yep. secret because with the, with all the different angles, yeah, that yeah. you can really create more air, can't 100%. you? Hundred percent. And you know, air is our friend when you're making yeah. whipped cream. Tilt the bowl. Air is your friend yes. when you're making an emulsion, like in a vinaigrette, tilt the bowl. But they're also your friend with eggs. And this is the thing I find, Bobby Ray, when the difference between a great home cook and a chef is those small changes. Mm -hmm. Those little small things right. that maybe you never thought about. Why does a scrambled egg or an omelet taste so much better in a restaurant than at home? It could be as simple as we incorporate a little more air into it. We yeah. take the time to do those little steps. So at right, Kitchen HQ, right. we want to give you those tools to do those little tricks. I love it. Right? So simple. did you, curious, did you always want to be a chef? I wanted to be a chef from the age of 10 years old. Really? So, I, yeah. so did someone in your life like inspire you? That well, You know who it was? Who? Truly? True. It was Julia Childs. Was it? I grew up oh, watching Julia her. Childs, I Jacques Pepin, the old school. Yes, right. Remember when Food TV was kind of like this, where yes, it was just someone yes. friendly who knew what they were doing and teaching a recipe. And that's what I grew up right, watching. Right, right. Emerald, who I got to meet oh, here. so amazing. Who's the best. Hi, Emerald. Like, those kinds of inspirational mm -hmm. figures are like, oh my gosh, you can actually do this. You can really turn simple foods into something spectacular. Yeah, I think that's what's so amazing about the whole culinary world and how it's evolved over yep. the years, that it's not just about eating. I mean, it's yeah, a yeah. whole experience. Well, we see it in design. Even the design of yes, our homes. The yes. kitchens used to be tucked away and, like, hidden off. Now it's right. all about open kitchens because people want to be around food. They want to see it. it being cooked. They want to be a part of the party. So it's... 
It's been fun. I can't yeah. believe I'm here. I know. Life's good. I can't right? believe it. So this was breakfast, but yep. I think we have more, don't we? We have more. Are you ready for the next recipe? I'm ready. Okay, check this out. Okay. So we've conquered egg bites 101. Got it. Keep eating, Bobby. Don't okay. worry about me. I'm going to. Keep eating. Now we're going to talk about waffles 101. And not just any waffles, stuffed waffles. Follow me on this. So we've all made pancakes a hundred times, sure. But for some reason, some of us are like, well, waffles, that seems like a restaurant food. That seems like something I can't really do. And I wanted to walk you through a quick waffle recipe that you can do, and you could do at home without a pre-bought mix. I try and avoid those pre-bought mixes because again, they're expensive and they're full of preservatives. So watch how easy it is to make a waffle at home using stuff you've got kicking around already. So all-purpose flour into, again, my tilted mixing bowl. Check this out. And these measuring cups are also from Kitchen HQ. And check these out. Little things, like a measuring cup, we tried to come up with a cool solution. So you have the measure, both liquid and dry, but they're squeezable and they've got a handle. And why is it cool that they're squeezable? Watch this. When I'm squeezing out a liquid, you can kind of give it a pinch and squeeze it like that so it pours out. If ever you've had a recipe that called for olive oil or something sticky like honey and it gets stuck in your measuring cup, we came up with a solution for that. Those are the small differences at Kitchen HQ. We want to come up with solutions for you in your kitchen. So the little tiny difference of being able to squeeze your measuring cup and pour, that adds up. That makes life much, much easier. Now in there, I added some heavy whipping cream, a little bit of milk. You have this in your fridge. That's why like a waffle is not that big a deal. I've got a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of baking powder. And that baking powder is our leavening agent. That's what's gonna help us rise. And correct me if I'm wrong, I bet most of our viewers, everyone out there on Facebook Live, probably has kicking around in their pantry flour, salt, baking powder, milk, cream. A waffle is not a big scary thing. Like this is a very approachable thing to do. So we're gonna start to whisk it together. I'm gonna go in with two eggs. Yes, pointy side up, give it a crack. There's one, and two. And here's my liquid measuring cup. Again, silicone. You could use melted butter, you could use oil, but you notice that little pinching action gets it into my batter. Nothing is getting stuck in the bottom of my measuring cup. So I love those little changes. You have your liquid measure here on the outside. You've got your grip. They're made of silicone, so they go right in the dishwasher. And that little squeezy action, think about anything sticky. This always happens to me with maple syrup or honey. When something is sticky and it gets into that measuring cup and you're kind of scooping it out, this is your solution. Give it a little squeeze, every drop comes out. So, my waffle maker's plugged in, and again, like the little egg bite maker, there's no settings. Once it hits green, that means it's preheated, ready to go. So, I'm going to get mixing here on my waffle batter. I've got flour, salt, baking powder, and then for the wet ingredients, some milk, some cream, a little bit of oil. You could go with melted butter, absolutely. And now, this is the base for any waffle batter. To be honest with you, a waffle batter, a basic waffle batter is not that different from a pancake batter. It's really about the ratio of wet to dry. I think a waffle batter should be slightly thicker than a pancake batter because we want our waffle to have some body, especially if we're stuffing it. So if ever you've made a pancake, you can make a waffle. But I find, and I talked about it at the top of our show, a lot of us kind of get in a breakfast rut. Pancakes, eggs, oatmeal. Pancakes, eggs, oatmeal on a loop. And a lot of people go to the grocery store with the intention to get out of their rut and they don't know what to do and they make the same dishes over and over again. If that's you, let me know on Facebook. But I think people get into dinner ruts, breakfast ruts, same recipes all the time. What I wanna do today for the whole hour is show you recipes to get you out of that rut. You can try something new, it's approachable, you've got the ingredients at home, now you just need the tool to make it happen. So I've got my waffle maker preheated. I know that because the light has turned green. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open it up with that mixing bowl because I can pour right from the mixing bowl. I don't need to dirty another utensil like a ladle. I just pour it in there. And you can see it going to the crev crevices there on the side. That's cool. Now before I stuff it, here's a little trick. I'm gonna let the bottom set up for just a second. Before I put in my filling, I want that bottom to give my waffle a little bit of structure, even for just a minute, so that my filling doesn't seep out of the waffle. 
So you can see right away, it's kind of starting to form. It's kind of starting to take shape. Now this is just, I want to show you right off the bat, a very plain waffle, but from this batter, think of any flavor you can. You could add cinnamon in here. You could add cocoa powder, which I'm gonna do in a second, to make a chocolate waffle. You can make cherry cheesecake waffles. You can make my favorite, green tea waffles. You could go savory and do a cheddar jalapeno waffle. You could, you know, there's a TikTok trend which is like, will it waffle? You can do that, and I love the depth of this stuffed waffle maker because you can stuff it with cheese, you can stuff it with cream cheese. I done a cookies and cream version, and like the Egg Bite Maker, go to hsn.com and check out some of those recipes that I've done with Hero Pictures. Thank you very much, you're gonna love it. I'm very proud of those pictures. So check it out, hsn.com. I've got a ton of different recipes. I want you to feel empowered. When you get that stuffed waffle maker home, you now know how easy it is to make a waffle batter. But think about the endless opportunities to add flavor into that batter. Cocoa powder, green tea, cinnamon, whatever you like. So now, I've got my apple pie filling inside and I'm gonna top it with a little more batter just to cover, just to cover those beautiful apples. Again, out of my tilting mixing bowl. So I don't need a ladle, I don't need another utensil, and then I'm going to close it up. Now watch this. Like the Egg Bite Maker, there's a lid and a little handle to lock it closed, and I leave it. I leave it for about eight to 10 minutes. I'm gonna check on it. Like the Egg Bites, don't be afraid. After a couple minutes, I can pop it open and take a peek, not to worry. So here's my basic batter, and like I said, now we've conquered basic waffle batter. Flour, salt, baking powder, you've got it. Milk, egg, some whipping cream, you got it. If you want to substitute the cream for more milk, no problem. Melted butter or oil, you've got it. You can make waffles at home. Now you can make any flavor you like. So here I've got, in the same beautiful bendable measuring cup, some cocoa powder, chocolate waffles. Add some of that cocoa powder in. Look at that. And by the way, all those recipes are online. With this, I did a beautiful Rocky Road waffle. My favorite ice cream flavor in waffle form. Thank you very much. And let's whisk it together. Now watch how it transforms. Look at this. With one added ingredient, you now have chocolate waffles. And here's a little known fact. Chefs like myself hate going out to brunch in restaurants because we know that brunch food, waffles, egg bites, etc., are actually really easy to make at home. You can do this now too. Add a little cocoa powder into your waffle mix, and here's my beautiful chocolatey waffle. Let me know on Facebook Live, everybody. What are you gonna put in your waffle mix? I wanna be surprised. Someone give me a new idea. You could put cinnamon in the waffle mix, you could put cocoa powder, you could put matcha powder. What else, let me think. Vanilla extract, of course, you could do. Oh my gosh, I forgot my vanilla extract. Thank you for reminding me. A little vanilla bean paste is my go-to instead of vanilla bean extract. Because honestly, I find vanilla extract to be a little artificial flavored. And the vanilla beans are very, very expensive. So I always go for the middle ground, that bean paste. You can find it now in your everyday kind of baking aisle. Go for the paste over the extract. It's less expensive than the bean and less artificial than the extract. And we've got a Facebook question. What is it? So these do nest as well. As someone was asking, do the bowls nest? Let's say you buy a couple of them. You can nest them absolutely, and they're dishwasher safe, which I love. It's all about less utensils to use. I'm not going for the, you know, the extra ladle. So you can nest them all together, and then throw them in your dishwasher when you're done. Now, I'm gonna turn on this other waffle maker here, and I wanna show you something cool. So this little insert here, this little part, is what turns it into a stuffed waffle. That gives you the extra height to kind of make a thicker, fluffier waffle to put some stuffing in. But let's say you don't want a stuffed waffle. Well, you could take this out. There you go. We could just do a straight up waffle. So I'll do that with my chocolate batter that I now made just by adding cocoa powder to my basic waffle mix. And I remembered my vanilla bean paste, which is a great hack. Now you add it into your waffles, into your waffle batter uh, maker. I'm going with my tilted mixing bowl. I'm gonna fill it up. Look how chocolatey. Love it. Close it up, lock and load. So now, I wanna hear from everyone on Facebook, what are you putting in your waffles? You gotta use the vanilla bean paste. Go out and try it, trust me, way better than the extract. But beyond chocolate, beyond green tea, beyond vanilla, cinnamon, what else can you put into your waffle? How about a savory waffle? You could do a chicken and waffle, you could do a cornbread jalapeno cheese stuffed waffle. 
Get savory with it. You can do a pizza flavored waffle. You can do just straight up cornbread. You could do a miniature chocolate cake in there. Like there's so much you can do. Cherry cheesecake waffle. I did a cookies and cream waffle and all those recipes are on hsn.com with full recipe breakdown, with pictures, but I need new ideas. I wanna know on Facebook Live, what would you make? And like I said with the Egg Bite Maker, don't be afraid to peek. Now, I wanna look at my apple pie stuffed waffle. You can take a look, open it up. It's cooking away, but here's another thing. So check this out. You might wonder, why do I have those silicone kind of tops? You can flip the waffle maker as well. So you can flip it this way if you want to. Same features, so you can get an even cook. If you see, for example, that, hey, I want the top to get more color, you can flip it and look. It's getting more color already. Give it a flip. We've thought of everything at Kitchen HQ. I want this a little more dark and golden, but you see that even after about five minutes, it's getting gold and it's getting steamy. So we've got the stuffed waffle. Over here, we've got the chocolate waffle. And you just press it down. Now it's ready to go for a single waffle. Green tea waffles, vanilla waffles, you can really kind of do anything. And while those cook, I want to come over here and show you something else. This is something that's been living on my counter recently because I started to use it, and I thought I'd use it maybe once or twice. I use it every day, and I want to show you what it is. It's our Kitchen HQ vacuum sealer, and we talk about buying food and storing food and keeping it fresh. Let's go back to that Gruyere cheese that I wanted you all to try. If you're buying fresh cheeses, cheddar, Gruyere, Fontina, Keep it fresh. So add the cheese into the silicone bags that come with it and watch this. Make sure your bag is in this little area here and close it. And then start. And you're gonna see all this air come out. And why do we wanna vacuum seal food? Well, air is the enemy of food, especially if we're putting it in the freezer because we don't want it to spoil. So in restaurants, we always marinate with vacuum sealers. We always store things in freezers with vacuum sealers. But taking out air of things is the way to do it. Even if it's just marinating things. You want to put your salmon with the olive oil, with the rosemary, with the lemon, and really take out the air and let it marinate. So I'm going to let that go. While I do that, I smell my waffles. Which one should I open first? Bobby, which one should I open first? Chocolate. I didn't forget about chocolate. Let's take a look. <laughs> Let's take a look. Oh. oh. What do you think? Oh. Again, with this one, you can flip it over, right? You can flip this over. How about my apple pie waffle? Let's see. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I might flip it one more time, do right? It, do it. I might flip it one more time. So I want to know out there on Facebook Live, what are you putting in your waffles? What are you looking forward to vacuum sealing? But really, I want to know about the waffles. Go to hsn.com. Let me know what you're thinking. We've thought of different flavor combinations, like chocolate, like green tea, like vanilla. What yes. else are you putting in your waffle makers? And have you ever made waffles before? If you've never made them before, do you think you can do it now, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever made waffles before, Bobby? Mm, with the waffle maker. With but the not waffle like maker, the right? So, you know, get creative out there. Let me know. By the way, when you make the waffles, I've got pancakes here, waffles. I always do these things in big batches. I'm not asking you to make one little cup of waffle batter, right? So make sure that you freeze these things so that they don't go to waste. So put them into your bag. And again, right into that little area here, which is where your bag goes. And lock it closed. You want to hear that snap. And then you can quick set your mode. Dry, vacuum, so vacuum here is automated, right? I just press down and you could see the air coming out. And this is what I do every time I make a batch of pancakes or waffles. Now when I stop, look at that. The pancake isn't crushed, the air is removed, they're now ready for the freezer. I'm gonna switch my mode to seal. And that's gonna seal the bag nice and tight. It's flashing, that means it's sealing, and when it stops flashing, that means it's perfectly sealed. And I can take it out and move it to the freezer. Then what I do at home, and this is why it's been living on my counter, because I'm really storing all my food, removing the air, and putting it in the fridge, putting it in the freezer, extending the shelf life of those waffles that I'm making, of those pancakes that I'm making, of the cheese that I'm buying. You really want to extend the shelf life. This has been a restaurant secret for many, many years. You need a Sharpie. Why do you need a Sharpie? Check it out. 
I have a freezer that is so well organized. Pancakes, and what's today's date? 21st, it's my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, dad. Happy birthday, dad. 80 years young. Oh. Mom, I know you're watching on Facebook. Get dad to watch too. Happy birthday, dad. <laughs> it's the 21st. I now know that I made this batch of pancakes on July 21st. It goes in my freezer. And if ever you've opened your fridge or your freezer and be like, what the heck is this? When's this from? Keep it fresh and label it. That's the way to do it. So you do your waffles, your pancake batches. How about the egg bites that I made earlier? I told you you can make them the night before. You can do them a couple of days before. If you remove the air, they're gonna stay fresh. So here's the bacon Greer egg bites that I was hoping to eat, but I'll eat them later. I can put them in here. I love these bags also because you can clearly see what's going on on the inside. And just by removing air, that's gonna extend the shelf life of that beautiful food that I went to the trouble of making. So I put the bag in the center. You wanna hear that click? And then you could do it on automatic or I can do it just by myself. And I'm gonna take the air out of those beautiful egg bites. Think about, by the way, when you find something on sale, this is a great way to buy something on sale, scoop it up, look at that, all the air is gone. And you can put it into your vacuum sealer bag, you could freeze it, refrigerate it, extends the shelf life. Now I'm gonna go mode to seal, press start, and it's gonna blink and seal that bag perfectly shut tight. This has been a restaurant secret for years. We always have big commercial vacuum sealers for not just food storage, but for marinating foods. When you get your steak and your fish and your chicken with some olive oil and aromatics, it sucks the marinade right into whatever you're marinating. But it's also for organization. Look at that. Isn't this better than going in a random container with no date, we have no idea what it is, when it was made. This is the way to do it. And we got another question on Facebook Live. Hit me. Great question. How long can the bag stay in the freezer? I've kept these in the freezer for months. It's not a question of the bag. It's more a question of the food. So here's the thing. In the freezer, it doesn't stay in there forever. Depending on the food, like those pancakes, a month or two. And I think that's good enough. So I like to know the date of things, right? So the food is what you got to think about. It extends the life of your food. You can leave it in the freezer for a couple months. The bags are indefinite. It's really about extending the life of the food. But here's the best part about this. Let's say I have these in my freezer and I pull them out or I have them in my fridge. I can cut them open, take out one egg bite or two egg bites or whatever, take out a couple pancakes. I can cut it, open it, now all the air is back and I can reseal it, put it back and do the same. Press down so that it's sealed. And then reseal. Whoops, I'm not totally sealed. So you see, guys, you got to make sure it's in there and you want to hear a double click. There you go. That's the double click. So anyway, that's going. My waffles are done for sure, Bobby. And I, oh, yes. I got to give you the chocolate one. Good. I was going to give you apple pie, but the chocolate is sizzling and talking to me. And I just have these marshmallows that I've toasted <gasps> oh. for the Rocky Road waffle. Oh. I got some hazelnuts. Oh, my gosh. Okay, okay. How about some chocolate sauce? Oh Go my for gosh. It. Hello, chocolate sauce. Hello, <laughs> chocolate sauce. Come on out, baby. You know what this is? This is a sign. I'm Canadian. We need maple syrup. This is a sign from above. They said, wait a second, Mr. Canada. You can't abandon us now. Maple syrup is what we need. Look at this. Bobby, I'm going to get you started on this oh, one, if yes. you don't mind. Finally, and I do want to get you. a stuffed <gasps> apple pie one out for you. Oh, take a picture but that check that out. So Isn't that super easy oh, to make? Oh my gosh, right? that looks amazing. Oh my gosh, look at my apple pie waffle. Mm -hmm. I love it. So stuffed or plain, any waffle will do. I just really want to showcase how easy it is. If you've never made a waffle before, <laughs> this is how simple it can be. A little cinnamon sugar on top of my apple pie waffle. And then over here in my Kitchen HQ cast iron, one of the most popular items we've ever featured. Kitchen HQ non-stick cast iron. I've caramelized some apples with some brown sugar. You could put a little bourbon in here. Okay, look at this. Look at this beautiful stuffed waffle with the apples and the caramel on top. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. That's pretty good. Bobby. Oh my look gosh. Look at this. Ooh. 
We've got an apple pie stuffed waffle oh. with those bourbon caramel apples. You've got the Rocky Road chocolate Josh. waffle. And I went Canadian with it. Little you maple did. syrup on top. Why I not? I love it. And Look I at that. love it. I'm going to enjoy this with Please. my fabulous tea. Yeah, you've got the tea. Oh. This is so great. I have to tell you what I love so much about this. Yeah. When the grandkids come over, yep. they're always bored. Yes. Anything to get them off the electronics. Yep. This would be so fun to do with them. So I have lucky kids because they love to do this kind of stuff, right? Do they? It's hands-on, and this is something that kids could actually get involved with doing. Oh. You saw how easy it was with those beautiful oh. measuring cups. Isn't that good? And oh. you got the waffles on the, uh, the apples on the inside. Oh. You got the apples on top. Think about the fillings. You could do a cream cheese Amazing. filling. You could do a chocolate hazelnut spread filling. You could right. really get creative with the fillings. White chocolate filling. Ooh. Oh my gosh, because so your kids like to cook with you. So my kids love to cook with me. That's so great. So, and I find that when kids are actually cooking with you, uh -huh. they eat what's being made. Mm, Whether it's waffles point. or otherwise. Good when point. kids have a hand in it being made, they're like, oh, wait a second. I'm invested in this whole process. Right. So if ever I want my kids to try something different, I get them involved in the kitchen. Those little squishy measuring cups are their favorite because they love, love to squish it. them and throw them in the bowl. Little approachable things like this. And I know, and I talked about it all hour, I know people can find themselves in ruts, breakfast ruts, scrambled eggs over and over Definitely. again. Or oatmeal or cereal over and over again. You need the right tools, but you also need the right recipes. On hsn.com, I'm putting up all those mm. different waffle recipes. Isn't that good? It's so good. Putting up all those different recipes. Get your kids involved. Get inspired to try something new. You can do it. Flour, yes. egg, water, uh, cream, milk. Super mm. easy. And then I make extras. I can seal them Vacuum as well. Vacuum seal them and freeze them. And freeze you know, by them. the way, what I did, the pancakes and the waffles, put right. slices of parchment paper between so they don't stick together. Got it. So weeknight, uh, week morning, quick breakfast, take out a frozen pancake, take out a Perfect. frozen waffle, toaster for a minute, and it's good. And I love that I can flip it over also. And you can flip it for what an even cook. That? It's super smart. These are so, and you know what? They're it's good. light, it's fluffy, it is so delicious. But I have to tell you, I drove in today, it was 100 degrees on my car. Ah, I got you. I, I know. I need I know. something refreshing. I know. I got you. <laughs> and when we talk about things that my kids like to make, sure, they love waffles. Yes, they love <laughs> eggs. Can you beat ice cream? You cannot. No. Ice cream 101, and I'm so excited for this quick recipe demonstration because of all the recipes we do on our shows, ice cream seems to be one of those things where it's like, it seems hard, there's a machine, I don't know how to do it. Ice cream is super easy to make, and we're going to make it right now. This is similar to the waffle recipe. This is your base, and from this base, you can make any flavor of ice cream, soft serve ice cream. So check this out. In my Kitchen HQ tilting bowl, which has kind of been the star of the show all hour, notice I'm not making you know, a mess with ladles or anything else. They're stackable, you throw them in the dishwasher, they're awesome. And I love those grooves because I can pour it right into my ice cream machine, which I'm gonna do. So here I've got in my favorite measuring cups, I can measure my liquid measure on the outside. I've got the handle, it's made of silicone, and it's made to be poured. A little bit of cream, and here's my secret, a little bit of milk. Now, a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between ice cream and gelato? And it's all about ratio of milk. So, I could have gone 100% cream in here, and this is the benefit of making ice cream at home. You're in control. You can go full cream, you can go half and half with cream and milk, cut down on the fat. You can go all milk and make a straight up gelato. You can go lactose free milk. You are in control of the dairy, of the amount of fat, the amount of sugar. That's why it's so great to make it at home on top of the fact that it's fun. Kids love doing this and they love getting involved. So I've got one and a half cups of cream, just half a cup of milk to cut the fat a little bit. But if I wanted to do a straight up gelato, I could do all milk, which is a great way to do it as well. A Little bit of sugar. And like I said, you are in control of the sugar. You could do white sugar, you could do brown sugar, you could sweeten naturally with, again, maple syrup or honey. All these ingredients you already have. You have this in your kitchen. Pinch of salt, yes, salt. Even in sweet recipes, ice cream, baking, cookies, a little bit of salt. In the same way that we use salt in savory recipes, salt and sweet is good. We wanna wake up the flavors of what we're making. Then, that vanilla bean paste again, this is one of those heroes of your pantry now. Better than the extract, not as artificial tasting, but not as expensive as the bean. I always have vanilla bean paste on hand and look for it in your baking aisle. So now, and you get the little speckles of vanilla too, which I love. With extract, you don't get that. You just get like a kind of murky brown color. So here I've got a basic ice cream mixture. Milk, 
cream, pinch of salt, some sugar, and vanilla. That's it. But I do have a secret weapon. And that is, and don't get afraid. It sounds weird, but please don't be afraid. Xanthan gum. It sounds like it's from a different planet. It's not. It's from your baking aisle now. You can find it in any old baking aisle. And why is xanthan gum important? Well, xanthan gum is a great stabilizer. It's also a great thickener. If you're making a sauce and you want it just a little bit thicker, sprinkle of xanthan gum. Or if you're making a soup or stew and you want it just a bit thicker, a little bit of xanthan gum. But it's also great to stabilize something like an ice cream. Ice cream has fat, water, sugar, and what happens is without a stabilizer, it gets icy in your freezer. You can make a beautiful ice cream and if you put it in your freezer, the next day, it'll be crystallized on your palate, not smooth like a commercial ice cream. You need a little stabilizer in my opinion. And that's how you, or even a sorbet or popsicles. This is the way to do it, to prevent the water from separating out from the fat and the sugar. And that's how you get a beautiful, smooth ice cream, even if you have it a week later. So if ever you've made something, froze it, and it forms ice crystals, and you say, well, this isn't as good, it's because it needs something like xanthan gum to stabilize your mixture. And if you look at a store-bought ice cream and look at the ingredients on the back, they have a stabilizer, and I want you to use one too. They also have a bunch of preservatives that you don't need. That's why making ice cream at home is the best. So, I've got now my Kitchen HQ soft serve maker. I gotta plug it in and turn it on. And now, it's starting to churn. You can see that that chilled bowl is being kind of churned. And with my tilting bowl, I don't need anything else. I can tilt it right into the machine. And that's it. Look at this. Kids love this. Can you imagine getting them involved, getting them to pick different flavors? And similar to the waffle idea, now that you've mastered ice cream making 101, there is limitless opportunities to add flavor into your ice cream base. You can make chocolate ice cream, green tea ice cream, cinnamon ice cream. You can make sorbets. You can cut back on the sugar. I've done basic sorbets where you just puree your favorite frozen fruit, strawberries, mangoes, blueberries. Again, you can control the amount of lactose, you can control the amount of fat. You can go full gelato, swap out the cream for milk. This is one of the benefits of making a soft serve at home. Yes, it's fun. Yes, it's interactive with your kids. Your grandkids will love doing this with you. But you also control fat versus you know, milk and cream, amounts of sugar, types of sweeteners. You could do brown sugar, honey, maple. And you also control your flavor. And that's it. All you do now is sit back and watch as the ice cream gets churned. And that paddle in the chilled bowl is gonna churn a beautiful ice cream that will not crystallize because we put in that xanthan gum. So think about all the little tricks we learned today. Vanilla bean paste is your friend. Xanthan gum sounds frightening, but I promise you, if you go to your baking aisle, you're gonna find it. And you're gonna use it to thicken your soups, your stews, to stabilize your ice cream mixtures. It's gonna go for 20, 25 minutes, and then, oh, it comes with these cool bowls, which kids obviously love. And look, set it up. Set up the kind of ice cream bar with the different toppings. It got the nuts, the berries, the sprinkles. When you go out to an ice cream shop and you know, treat the family, everyone gets a little soft serve, it adds up. This is also about saving money. You could do this at home. You could do it interactively with your kids, with your grandkids. You could churn ice cream, you could churn sorbets, gelatos, and it's all about that ratio of milk and cream. You can control the amount of fat. You can control the amount of lactose. You can control the amount of sugar. You can control your flavors. Similar to the waffle maker, let me know on Facebook Live, what are you putting in your ice cream? What flavors can you come up with? Let's get creative and let's have fun with it. And then you take that and open it up. Look at this, it's just gonna come on out. Now the guys in the control room, do we have another Facebook question? Is that what you're telling me in there? <laughs> Great question. So someone's asking, hey look, can I sub in almond milk or lactose free milk? Absolutely. And this is one of those benefits of making ice cream at home. It's all about, yes it's about fun, but it's about controlling the flavors, controlling the toppings, doing it interactively. You could use coconut milk if you want to watch your lactose, lactose free milk. Absolutely get creative with your base and with the amount of sugar. Get creative with those toppings. 
stick in those strawberries. Think about how much fun it would be to get kids involved with a little ice cream setup so that they could make their own flavors. And that was a great question. Keep them coming on Facebook. Can you use coconut milk, almond milk? Absolutely. Can you adjust the ratio of milk and cream? Yes. Can you use different sweeteners? Absolutely. I just put white sugar in here just to show you the most basic ice cream. But you can use brown sugar, maple syrup, honey as a sweetener. You can really get creative. It's about fun, but it's also about control. So check this out. You get the soft serve unit, but you also get those beautiful bowls, the fun spoons. Kids love it. It's for sorbet, it's for a soft serve. It's for anything really you wanna make, it's the same idea. And you get that lever and that soft serve consistency comes on out into the most beautiful soft, look at my ice cream. Soft serve on the palate, and this is what it's all about. Mm. Unlike, mm. unlike store-bought ice cream that could be rock hard, I love the consistency of a soft serve because you can't replicate it. And that xanthan gum is the way to do it. And if you can see in the top here, it's churning away beautifully. It thickens, it really turns into the perfect ice cream consistency. Let's say now you've made a batch of ice cream. You've gone to the trouble. You've made homemade ice cream with cream, milk, vanilla, pinch of salt, vanilla bean paste, don't forget. Little xanthan gum to stabilize your mixture. It's not necessary, but try it, it's great. You wanna store your ice cream. Let's say I keep going, I'm making lots of batches. We also thought of that. So at Kitchen HQ, you've got these kind of storage compartments to store your ice cream. Perfect for the freezer with the lid so you can stack them, you can store them, and it keeps that ice cream from crystallizing. I talked about that crystallization. That can also happen if your ice cream is left uncovered to get that cold freezer air exposed to it. You don't want that. So, if you're gonna do the ice cream, get the containers as well, because they're great. Bobby, I didn't forget about I'm you. I'm waiting. What do you think? <laughs> I what, think what it's amazing. What would be the ultimate ice cream flavor? Oh my gosh. I'm the coffee ice cream girl from Rhode coffee Island. Coffee ice cream. Hey, yes, yes. I love that. I know. I love that. So great. And you know what else, too? So you could do a coffee-flavored ice cream. Then yeah. you could swirl in a different flavor combination. Oh. You could swirl in caramel swirl. Put some butterscotch in butterscotch it. Butterscotch in Ooh. there. If you like a kind of chocolate coffee Peanut vibe. butter. Peanut butter. You could kind of, as it's churning, incorporate more flavors into yeah, it, right? Like so how it. cool is that? That's amazing. And I encourage you. Look, Bobby. Make me a batch of coffee flavored ice cream, but store it in the right way. You wanna make sure that that freezer air doesn't get to it, doesn't crystallize it. So look out for that as well with Kitchen HQ. You could store your ice cream the right way. And before I scoop it out, I've got this cool kind of ice cream scoop from Kitchen HQ. It looks normal, but there's a little button here. And I turned it on, you charge it with your USB charge, and when it turns green, it means it's heated up. And when it heats up, It'll perfectly scoop out my ice cream. If ever you bent a spoon or wrestled with ice cream coming out of a, a cold freezer, this is the way Brilliant. to do it. Mm. Oh yeah, there it goes. Look, the perfect portion of ice cream, the perfect ball of ice cream with that heated scoop without wrestling. I think every ice cream parlor in America needs one of these. But look at this. Bobby, Oh, I got I some it. ice cream for you. I'm gonna put some strawberries on perfect. there. Uh, chocolate sprinkles. Oh, uh, definitely chocolate. So. Perfect. And? And? A spoon. A spoon. Cool. Perfect, because I think I also need to put it on top of my waffle. You got, whoa, right? a la mode. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. now we're thinking. Mm. Now we're thinking. Throw a little oh. scoop of that on your mm. hot apple pie waffle. Oh. And now we're in dessert territory. We've gone Let's from do it. chic brunch to the oh, ultimate dessert. Isn't this great? I'm set. Chef, first of all, this has been so much fun. I've totally. learned so much. Yeah. Tilt the egg. Yep. I need the vanilla bean paste. You need the paste. I need the xanthan gum. Try xanthan gum. Yes. It sounds scary, but it's great. I love it. And you know what? These were just like three basic recipes, like the egg bites. Right. The waffles, the ice One cream. Bite. Mm. You know, I, I thought that those were things that maybe some people have never made before, mm -hmm. but they're totally approachable, and I want to show with the right tools, you can do it. We've got the recipes on hsn.com. We've got the pictures. You can get started right away, getting out of that kind of rut. And check out, by the way, I'm back at 8 p.m. We're doing a bunch of different recipes, awesome. including with our nonstick cast iron pan, this is one of the most popular items. Last time I did this as a Today Special, we sold it out. 
People have been loving this because it's traditional cast iron. Love it. But non-stick, super easy to clean. Mm. Steaks, chicken, pork chops, you could use it to bake, fry. I did the caramelized apples in my cast iron and it's totally non-stick. So something sticky like caramel Whoa. will come right off. Well, I'm glad you're doing that, but frankly, I always, <laughs> someone who feels that dessert should be first. Dessert, dessert goes should first, be first. <laughs> we're doing dessert first. Exactly. I thought you'd like these recipes. Oh my gosh, they were fabulous. And you can do them. You can do the waffles and ice cream, you can do it. I can do it. And everybody can check out everything at Kitchen HQ. Go to yep. hsn.com. Thank you so much for joining us also, like on Facebook too. Yep. What a blast. Thank you, Chef. It was so much fun. Thanks, guys. Great time. Beekman time right now. Get ready as I have one more bite. Enjoy. When you started making bars of goat